Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Kahane with Stu Miniman. Welcome back to IBM Edge, day two. We're excited to be here today with Pornima Vizay Shankar. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, she's the founder of Femgineer. Yep. Uh, so I understand this is your first IBM Edge. What brought you to the event? Yeah, well, I um, was brought out by Penny Hill. She reached out to me. There's a Women in Tech panel that's going on this evening that I'm going to be on, um, talking about my career trajectory, as well as a recent book that I wrote, How to Transform Your Ideas into Software Products, uh, as well as what Femgineer does as a company. All right, so for Nima, we were talking a little bit off camera. Yeah. You're a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. You're based out in the valley. Um, you know, your current company is Busy Bee? I, I it's Fem Engineer. Uh, oh, it is Fem yeah. Engineer. I'm sorry, Busy Bee was the, the, the previous company? Yes. Okay, so yeah, t tell us a little bit about those companies uh, and you know, how did you get to become an entrepreneur? Sure. Uh, so my first startup was actually Mint.com. Uh, I started that with a friend of mine from college, and that was back in 2006. Um, so if you're not familiar with Mint, it's a personal finance I, I am website. familiar with Mint, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, during my time at Mint, I was actually writing a blog on engineering entrepreneurship called Femgineer, and after the acquisition, um, was at a crossroads of what to do next. Uh, and over the years, I've been invited to speak and teach and do a lot of events like this. And so I thought, why not an education company? Uh, and decided to repurpose my blog, Femgineer, into that company. So over the last two and a half years, that's been my primary focus. Uh, and we do a lot of online courses in three categories, product development, entrepreneurship, and leadership. Well, that, that's excellent. Uh, you know, so I, I'm a blogger myself, nice. and you know, the, the joke always was is, uh, you know, is there money to be in blogging? Well, I don't know, Chris Brogan took most of it, sure. and uh, there's a little bit of money to be paid here, but uh, it, it's a huge part of what you can do. How does kind of the, the blogging, the social, the entrepreneurship, how, do, how does that all come together yeah. in your career? I think you know, it's all about building an audience, and I started doing it before there were um, quite as many startups as there are today, quite as many you know, women in, in technology and in engineering. So uh, I think you know, being an early adopter was really valuable and being one of the pioneers in, in that space. Um, so it's helped me build an audience. It's also helped me decide what I want to focus on and pull the audience in into the things that I do, into the companies that I either build or advise. Um, and I think it's also a great way for you to kind of freely express your thoughts. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you are working somewhere, you don't get to necessarily say it or you have to be filtered, but when it's your own blog, when it's your personal brand, then you get to be true to who you are and get to mix that in in with more technical topics and you don't have to feel you know, hindered in any way. Yeah, it, it's an interesting topic because it's, you know, how much is your job you, how much is you you, yeah. um, and right, blogging and, and social media in general is a good way to, to do that, but it's a tough balance for a lot of people, especially, you know, it's, it's a little easier if you run your own company right. uh, because, you know, your boss is probably going to work you hard, but they <laughs> probably won't fire you right. um, as opposed to if you're working for a, another company. What, what, how do you recommend, what do you talk to people about, you know, if they're working for, you know, a 400,000 person person company like IBM, how do they balance that? How do they you know, have their own brand while, while working for a big brand? Yeah, um, this is actually one of, the, one of the courses that I teach on uh, speaking at conferences and how to do proposals and what projects to talk about. I think the first thing that I um, always say is find common themes. Right, so you don't necessarily have to talk about IBM's new cutting edge flash technology, right? You can instead say like, hey, I have expertise in cloud storage or in flash without getting into the nitty gritty details or expo exposing patents or trade secrets. So you can start there. Um, and then the second thing I think is uh, focusing on problems that you have solved that are general, right? Most people have trouble when it comes to 
getting teams together, keeping them motivated, shipping products, appealing to customers, like these are all general themes, but you might have some specific experiences that you're open to sharing. Um, so I, that's what I encourage people to do. And then, you know, start small. You don't have to start and think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna build like a you know, billion dollar company off of this. You can start by just saying, hey, I have some ideas that I wanna share with the world. Um, when I started, I think I was writing probably one post a month and sometimes one post a quarter because I was just so busy. Um, but over time, you start to develop a position as a thought leader. Um, people reach out to you. You have more opportunities. Even internally within your company, I think people uh, recognize the work that you're doing and you might not always get that if you're just heads down. So, for, for Nima, that's, that's a great point that you bring up. And I actually used to work at IBM myself and I'm a millennial and, you know, in a big company, we're always trying to differentiate ourselves and grow our brand, uh, like you were saying. So would you recommend you know, developing and starting a blog or creating a Twitter? Or what, what's your advice on that? Yeah, I think um, you know, pick one medium. You don't have to do everything. I think a lot of times people feel like they've got to be on everything. They need to have a podcast and a show and a blog, et cetera. You know, pick one. Um, pick the one that you feel most comfortable with. If you like podcasting, great, you know, have that be your medium. If you like to write like I do, then have that be your medium. Um, but I think the key is about consistency. It's about producing content on a consistent basis. Um, the other thing I think is it can be a great way for you to recruit for your company uh, and build a sense of you know, what it's like to work there, what are some of the projects that you're working on, um, and that can drive people to show interest in what you're doing. Um, so I think it's good for that. It's also good for the company overall to have their own employees be seen as thought leaders. So I think um, making sure that they understand what you're doing and how it's aligned with, with their brand, it doesn't have to be such an offshoot. I know some people prefer to have you know, completely different entities and that's, that's up to you. Um, but I think it's really about having a consistent message, finding that sort of over time, um, and then being okay with sharing your experiences. They don't always have to be like, well, here's what I did at IBM from nine to five, right? It, it can even be just a moment in a particular quarter. Um, it can be that uh, product that you just released and how a customer received it. Um, it could be maybe a difficult conversation if you're open to sharing that if the other person was. Um, so I would, I would certainly encourage people to, to push the boundaries, um, but share your experiences. It doesn't always have to be what you think people want to hear. All right, so you're in the Valley and uh, we were talking off camera. You, you're involved in some incubator spaces yeah. out there. What, what, what's the atmosphere like for you know, starting up? You know, what, what's kind of the, the big opportunities and some of the biggest challenges that you see? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of traffic on 101 these days. <laughs> uh, there wasn't when I moved there 10 years ago, so we're, we're experiencing a boom time, which is good. And I think especially the startup community is definitely on the rise. Um, so I, in particular, am an entrepreneur in residence at 500 Startups. Uh, we have about 30 companies every quarter that come in, we invest in them, and then we work with them for three to four months. Um, my specific role is I advise about seven to 10 companies on everything from being their therapist, uh, to product development, uh, customer acquisition, and fundraising. And by the end of it, they do a demo day where they're presented with about 400 investors. Uh, and many of them go on to raise capital for their startups. Um, so it's great to see the evolution, like what they, where they come in at, where they leave. And then uh, I've been there for about a year, a little over a year now, so I've even seen companies grow even beyond when I initially interviewed them for the accelerator. Yeah, so uh, you know, the Cube actually has a Palo Alto office, and uh -huh. Jeff Frick, who's the general manager of the Cube, does a regular series on, on women in tech. Yeah. Um, it, as an entrepreneur yourself, you know. How is the environment out there for women in tech and for startups? I mean, we've interviewed sure. you, know, you know, women in their 20s that are starting companies, but you know, look, it's, it's tough to start up in general, yeah. and you know, the, there's the whole women in tech issue. What, what's your viewpoint? Well, I think there's much more support in um, the Valley than maybe some other places. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with just the sheer number. Uh, and also, since 2010, there has been an uptick uh, in terms of overall support, whether it's mentorship, whether it's funding, um, and just general education. So I think that's a positive, and I uh, only encourage women to move to the Valley and, uh, and either start businesses or work for a startup or work for a big company, um, but get their feet wet. Um, I certainly don't tell them to you know, leave or do anything else um, because I do 
strongly believe that it's going to give them what they want in terms of freedom, flexibility, and to innovate and make a difference um, where they might not get those same kind of opportunities in other industries. So that, that's a great point. And I actually, I live in Boston and we're talking before this as well. A lot of my friends are interested in entrepreneurship and are considering moving to the Valley. Do you think that that's a necessary move or do you think that the Boston entrepreneurial market is a good place or, you know, where is there opportunity outside the Valley? I think there's certainly opportunity outside the Valley. I think it depends on a couple factors. I think the first is like, you know, do you want to deal with the rising cost of housing? Um, <laughs> do you want to deal with traffic? Do you want to have sunshine? You know, I, think, I think some of those personal issues are important. Um, and for a lot of people, they prefer to stay in the city that they're in. And I've certainly seen a number of amazing companies come out of other areas. In fact, in my book, I showcased um, one uh, person who grew a startup in Atlanta um, as Pardot, and they got acquired by Exact Target. Um, and what was great is, you know, it was uh, on the upwards of a $100 million acquisition, but it was not in the Valley. They didn't take money. So it is possible to build outside. I think it depends on what your priorities are. Um, you know, I'm obviously biased. I've been in the Valley for 10 years, and I think it's a great ecosystem where there's a lot of mentorship. There's a lot of uh, ability to raise venture capital or angel investment. Um, and there's a in particular concentration there that you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, so so I, I have to defend, you know, yeah. Boston Tech, you know, the, the <laughs> hub, the alley in New York City, you know, what's going down in, in, in Texas. Um, th there's a lot going on. Yeah. Absolutely, look, Silicon Valley, you, you've got access to the VCs and the angels more than anyone else. One, one of the biggest things we need back east more, but, you know, we, we've got some pretty good universities oh, yeah, in lots yeah. of places. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. So, uh, last question I have for you is, you know, you, you, your company's Femgeneer. Femgeneer. Yeah. Um, you know, do you ever get pushback on people sometimes? Is why do we need to have femgineer? We have engineers. Can't we just have female engineers and male engineers? And you know, do we need to be gender blind, or you know, do we have to make differences there? Sure. Well, uh, the first thing is that femgineer actually was the name that I came up with because I knew that Pornima VJShanker.com was going to be really hard to search. <laughs> uh, so it, was, it grew out of a personal brand, and that's where the name came from. Um, the second thing is actually more than 50% of our students, as well as our audience, are men. Yeah. And because of that, you know, they're coming to us, one, to learn. Um, two, they want to be able to mentor the next set of their employees. Uh, and I think you know, even some are fathers, and so they care about generations beyond. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think it needs to be uh, a gender divide, which is why we don't exclusively say like only women can participate. Um, but this was a personal brand, and so the name is going to stick around for a while. Okay, poor name. I know we're running out of time, and I heard you're doing a book signing. Is that I tonight? I am. Yes, it is. Yep, oh, right after the panel. Right after the panel, perfect. So, Pornima Vijay Shanker, thank you for joining yeah, us today. Thank you. Founder of Femgeneer, uh, great to have you. So, thank you for joining us, Cube Nation, and we'll see you soon.